Welcome to Montpelier City Forum. My name is Richard Shear, and this is yet another in the series of television shows that we're doing on Town Meeting Day, and we're doing candidates. We have one good show coming up on the school budget. It'll be an hour long, and we have another good show coming up on the city budget that will be an hour long, and those will also cover the articles on the ballot, such as bonding. But tonight we're going into District 3, and we're, we have a candidate here, Craig McDermott. Craig? Hi. How long you lived in District 3? I've lived in District 3 uh, almost my entire life. Lived in Montpelier my entire life. Where in District 3 do you live? Off of Berlin Street, Wilson Street. Yeah. What's it like on the hill? We love it. It's a great neighborhood. Um, lots of young people and um, never had a complaint. Um, Craig, District 3 is different than the other two districts, which are kind of snaky and, and gerrymandered. District sure. 3 has a lot more cohesion to it. Could you give us your sense of what District 3 really is? Uh, I think District 3 is different because it's got a whole bunch of different pieces to the, to the town. Uh, I refer to it as a town. Uh, but the city in itself, uh, you've got in District 3, you've got business downtown. You've got a, a, a big piece of, uh, I wouldn't call it a big piece, but you've got a piece of the business district downtown. Uh, you've got a, you know, a bunch of neighborhoods. And then you have River Street uh, and going up into National Life in that area. It's just got a whole bunch of different pieces to it. So it's a, it is a different district. It's a very large district. Uh, a, a large par portion of the population lives in District 3. Uh, there's a lot of renters in District 3, uh, a lot of single-family homes. Um, and... So, yeah, the, the, the population of District 3 is spread out in all directions. Uh, it's, it's much different than a lot of the other areas that are maybe more uh, one-family or two-family households or uh, renters specifically. District 3 has a little piece of everything going on. Uh, District 3, we've, we've talked a lot in these sessions about downtown Montpelier. Sure. District 3 has a different business section. It does. That, in a sense, is perhaps neglected. How would you help that business district that's to the east of Dunkin' Donuts and mm. to the east of, um, of the Granite Street Bridge? That's a great and that's question. That's part of District 3. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I'm a big believer in incentivizing new business development um, and, and offering opportunity for businesses that exist in District 3 and even in the rest of the city, uh, new opportunities, uh, fresh chances to get out and, um, and develop and expand. And, uh, you know, whether that comes in from a, a, a tax incentive or a... Uh, uh, some other type of incentive. I think there's things we can do as council members um, to facilitate that growth. Now you're knocking on the doors like everyone is uh, sure. in your district. What are you hearing from District 3 people? I'm hearing a lot of people complaining about snow removal right now, I think, uh, and, the, and the condition of the roads, which, you know, I think that's just a result of the weather. Um, uh, I put out a, as a matter of fact, I put out a bunch of flyers uh, with surveys on them, and I posted some surveys on Front Porch Forum, and I've, I've had a lot of response to that. Um, what are you hearing? Well, we're, surveys? we're we're getting um, responses of people concerned about traffic congestion. Um, they're concerned about pedestrians being able to navigate the city uh, safely. Specifically on Berlin Street, we've had some feedback about. Uh, pedestrians being able to cross the street, lack of signage, uh, and a number of uh, responses in regards to snow removal. And I think it's the timing, like I said, of, of, of me putting out these surveys, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, <laughs> a couple of the times I put the surveys out, there were some pretty good storms, so people might have been feeling the effects of those storms. But uh, for, for the most part, you know, people seem pretty satisfied with with what's going on around here. I mean, we have a great city, you know, and... What, uh, what, you grew up in this town. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, and uh, you went to the schools. Yep, yeah. What kept you here? It's a great place. I left for college, um, but Montpelier has a quality all, all of its own, as we all know, uh, and we love it. Uh, it's what this, is it? It's I mean, a small if you were town. If it's you were describing this to somebody 
who said, Craig, I'm thinking of moving my family here. Why should I move to Montpelier? I, I would ask him, um, you know, do you like Norman Rockwell? That would be my first question because the city is, is you can pick any location in the city and picture a Norman Rockwell oil painting or a drawing. Uh, it's just, it's picturesque around here. It's beautiful. And uh, the way of life is, is a very pristine, uh, naturally awesome way of life. And I think that people that live here uh, and, and grew up here specifically know that. Uh, one other thing is that the summers are amazing. Uh, you know, it's just, it's great to be here in the summer. You know, it's, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Uh, I think people are crazy when they move to Florida or, you know, wherever else. It's just, why would you leave this place? Uh, the social environment's wonderful. People care about their backyards. They care about their neighbors. They care about their neighbors' kids. You know, I mean, it's just, it's a great community, and, and that's what makes Montpelier uh, a great place have, to come. Now that you know? we have the idyllic, let's move to the less than idyllic. Sure. What are the problems that you see that you would like to see addressed, and that's that form the basis of your candidacy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think one big challenge we have as a, as a city is affordability. Um, and, and How do you define affordability and the, on the local level? Uh, affordability is, you know, based at, at brass tacks, it's what it costs to live here, right? Um, and, and what it costs to, um, to be a member of the community. Um, how much is it going to take out of your wallet every week to, to operate and function within the town? And uh, it's becoming more challenging for more people. I just had a, a lady uh, who I didn't even tell I was running for city council. She came, just came out and we were talking on the playground. Uh, I have a seven-year-old that goes to Union School. And uh, she was talking to me about how she's going to leave when her kids get out of the school system because, you know, they can't afford to stay here and retire. And to me, you know, what we were just talking about are the qualities. Those qualities come right now at an expense. And it's a very, it's a very expensive place to live. Property taxes are expensive. Uh, and right now with inflation and all the national issues we're dealing with, it just compounds into this very challenging uh, situation for people to navigate on a daily basis around here. You know? what, does, what levers does Council have on that? You know, I, I think we can uh, facilitate growth uh, and, and make it a little bit more enticing for developers to come here. And, um, and I know some of this stuff is already in the works, you know, uh, but, but we can make it more enticing for developers to come here and uh, build high density living uh, Were areas. you following the um, master plan discussion? I was. It's yeah. hard not to yeah, because right. it's gone it's on right and here. on. It's right here. You know, it's gone on and on. It's right here in front of us. And it's, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're from here, you should pay attention to it. You know, it's... Uh, what was that discussion like from, from your perspective? Did it end up at a place that you felt comfortable with? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm comfortable with the way that Montpelier is operating right now. I, 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 like, I like the direction we're headed. I think it's a great place. And I just think we need to do more to facilitate opportunities for people to come here and live and be able to afford to do so, you know. Um, this can't just be a town for lawyers, doctors, uh, and lobbyists. We need to, um, and, and, and the other challenge there is that we need to be able to provide uh, middle class jobs and, 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 a, and an expansive job market, right, inside the city, inside the town that we are. The, um, the city councilors sit on commissions, they sit on boards, they, uh, they also sit on agencies that are funded by the city. Um, uh, there's a counselor on the Kellogg Hubbard Library, there's a counselor on the, the Public Safety Commission, there's a counselor on Montpelier Alive, sure. uh, there's a counselor on the Economic Development Corporation. If you were on the Economic Development Corporation, what would you see, how would you see us economically developing in order to pick up a few more people in town in order to raise all boats and, and that sort of thing. Is there a direction that you have in mind for Montpelier 10 years from now or 15 if we were doing it right? I think, I think there is. I think uh, some of these parking lots that we have, and, and this, this is kind of along the Montpelier Alive uh, 
purview and the net zero. Um, some of these goals are shared, as you know, by by some of these um, by some of these groups and and these initiatives that are already happening and rolling. I think we are headed in the right direction, but I think we can do a better job at facilitating some of those uh, those opportunities and 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 maybe even maybe that comes from communicating and asking for more support from our state representatives, uh, getting them more involved and in trying to get it get it going on their level and communicating what we need from them to make it easier for our growth in some of those areas. But what I was going to tell you is uh, the, you know, some of these areas that are right now, they're just one level parking lots. Uh, to me, that's just a waste of space. We can put those cars just about anywhere, including in the development or below the development or above the development of those high density housing buildings, uh, which would offer uh, ample space for some business as well, you know, and those businesses would offer uh, economic growth and opportunities for middle class families to come here, live here affordably, uh, and hopefully stay here, you know, and add to the population. Now, one of the things that the Economic Development Corporation has done is um, the distillery, the proposed distillery over on, on Berry Street. Sure. And there's infrastructure going out to that, there's water sewers and the like. Yeah. And that's a hop, a skip, and a jump from Sabin's Pasture. Right. What's your view on, on what's ultimately going to happen in Sabin's Pasture? That, that's been a decade plus <sighs> yeah. in discussion. Yeah, it's been a long, I mean, that's been a long battle, and I understand both sides of it. Um, to say that I have a future view for Sabin's Pasture or a plan, uh, I don't. I'll be honest with you. Um, I think it's going to be hard for a developer to come in and work with that land. I mean, it's challenging land, right? Uh, but I don't think that it should just sit around and 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 just be there. I understand people want to use it, right? But um, there are opportunities. We could have uh, uh, some green companies come in, some companies that are sustainably uh, and responsibly based, uh, and 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 they could do some really good things to that area. Not the entire area, but but there's some area over in Sabin's Pasture that that could be used. I think. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I'm not opposed to that. The city budget. Are there areas in the city budget where you could see adjustments that could be made, uh, either investments that, that you think would help the city or areas where you think we could achieve greater efficiencies? Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with the city budget the way it is. I, I'm, I'm usually a supporter of the bonds for, I have kids in school, and um, I, I tend to be a supporter of the city budget. I think they do a good job uh, in uh, getting, getting things done and, and allocating funds where they should be allocated, uh, and I think that the city does a, a fairly good job of, of, of spending those funds. Um, I, I think we, we, there are places we could find savings, I'm sure, as many municipalities are being forced to do with, uh, you know, our, our current governor administration uh, cutting back some of the school funding. It, it becomes harder and, and people are forced to make cuts or find savings on certain levels. But, uh, you know, I think we do a pretty good job. We do a pretty good job. And, um, as we see the funds. cuts. You know, sure, it's kind yeah. of we're downstream from those yeah, cuts. They'll yeah. start in the federal level, they'll head down yeah. to the state level. Trickle down to us. Right, and right. then the, those cuts will trickle down to us. Do you see the city budget being expanded to take up those cuts? Do you... I, I don't. I, I, I tend to be dovish on tax hikes and tax raises for uh, the middle class and even the upper I mean, anybody really. Tax hikes in my book are, are a negative thing. Um, I do support the school bond this year, uh, not just because I have a child, but because our last school bond is in the Delta period. It's retiring. What is the Delta period? It's retiring. Okay. So, so 20 years ago, we took out a bond as a municipality, and, and we've paid that bond off. So it's retired. And now we're, uh, as a municipality, in need of some infrastructure changes around the city. And I'm in support of that bond for that reason. Um, you know, it... Uh, it's an important issue, I think, and taxes are an important issue. And, and you're right, the, 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 the chain of command or the way that things really work right now 
uh, whether we like it or not, are that the cuts come from the top and they, they end up at the small, at the little guy, right? The typical story, uh, as unfortunate as that is, um, we'll see what we're faced with as a municipality later on. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't tell the future. I don't know what our challenges right. are going to be, right? So I don't want to say um, that the municipality may not ask for more money, because they may. But I'm committed to representing my constituents. And if they tell me that they're not into paying more taxes, that's probably the line I'll tell, you know. Uh, as what's, what's the thought on, uh, you're up the hill closer to the uh, water treatment plant sure. than I am down in, yeah, in yeah, District yeah. 2. Yeah. What's, the, what's the feeling on the methane project that would, that would pick right. up Right, it would pick up methane to and generate, generate power. Exactly. Um, it's a capital it's, investment. Right, and I, th I think it's a good. I think it's a good one. I think it's. I think uh, opportunities like those are good for our city, our municipality, and our state national uh, ideology. I think it's a good. Uh, it's a good project to look into. I haven't. Uh, I don't know all the answers, and I don't know exactly how those things work. Uh, but I think they're. I think alternative energy is a wonderful thing. I think it's a positive, a net positive for us as a community to get into No pun into intended. The, right, exactly. Yeah, right. I think it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a really good thing for us to look into. Anything that is going to save us money, is going to be healthier for us and, and, and greener for us is, is a wise decision. Everybody, all of these shows that I do have one commonality, and everybody's complaining about the infrastructure. And you had sure. spoken before sure. about people talking about the streets. Yeah. Can we do more? Or, 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 uh, how, how do you view our infrastructure issues? Are, are they just so overwhelming that, you know, you throw up your hands? Again, well, I get, definitely we don't do that. You know, throw up our, throwing up our hands is not the answer. Um, but I think we're, we're going to have to start, if the cuts continue to come down from the federal level and they continue to put pressure on the state, and the state continues to put pressure on the municipalities, as has been the uh, direction of this administration, um, and even at a state level, the administration. Uh, we we are, we're faced with uh, with with the challenge of looking elsewhere and and trying to think outside the box. Um, it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be challenging as as we advance, but we can do. I, I'm, I'm confident we can do it. I'm the city council in March, once they're elected at the next meeting, they go on a retreat, and Bill goes with them, and Bill has his whiteboard, and they put their objectives and their goals, and each councilor has the chance to put his or her goal and his or her mark on that board sure. as to what they want to do. What would your one or two suggestions be that go on that board? What are your priorities? I think my first priority would be to make sure that the school infrastructure around the schools are are okay and sound. Right now, we have a huge challenge within our schools. Um, but those are separate budgets, and those are separate oversight. They are. They are. But as just as a, a community member and a citizen, uh, that would be on the list whether or not you know what I mean. Right. It would just be there. Uh, so you're talking about links, natural links between the city and the school, such as Absolutely. recreation and, and things like that. All, all kinds, yeah. Um, and, you know, you, you tend to see there's, there's more links between schools now than there was 30 years ago. Uh, and there's a lot of municipalities that are using school facilities like gymnasiums and stuff like that to bring in uh, all kinds of business, you know, and, and generate all kinds of traffic to the city. I think there's an opportunity for that. Um, but to answer your question, I think a, a big goal of mine um, would be to fix infrastructure, I think, and, and to bring down affordability for, for people and to attract uh, middle class families to, to the population of our, our town, our city. How do we deal with the social issue of, of uh, let's use opioids or, or, or mental health or any of those larger meta issues? Yeah that affect our city. How can we best handle that? Is there a better way of, of dealing with it than the way it's 
dealt with now, or, or would you continue the current thing and just monitor it more? I think generally we're doing the best we can. You know, the, these issues come down to a, a, an, a very finite difference, I think, in a lot of cases. There, there, there are differences between families and, 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 and people and individuals, and, and I think we're doing a good job as a municipality at addressing a lot of these issues. They are very challenging. They're extremely uh, costly in many cases, and they're very stressful to the, to the services that we have as cities. So we, we're, we're doing a good job. I think our, our approach right now is, is a good one. Uh, I don't necessarily know that I would have any suggestions to change that at this point. I would have to confer with those who do that job on a regular basis and get a better feel for it. Farmers Market's moving up to State Street. It's all for years. It's sure. been in that little nook next yeah. to Julio's. What's your thought on that? What's your thought on downtown development it's a, in the core downtown? Now? Yeah, I think the core down the, the development in the core is a good thing. I think it's a great thing. Um, and and events like like the farmers market uh, coming to State Street is is a good thing. It brings more traffic into the core, uh, and I think it gets people ready for a, a larger change that is eventually. Inevitable, probably. Which what is, is that larger change that's eventually inevitable in our town? Uh, You've been in this town for sure, yeah, your entire yeah. life, minus college. I think, the con I think that uh, congestion and traffic has gotten to the point where we need to try to figure out alternatives around the downtown core. Um, and whether that's closing off State Street or a portion of State Street or redirecting traffic and, and, and finding alternatives, at some point we're going to have to make some pretty big changes uh, as a city to facilitate growth. Otherwise, our taxes how are going do to... We, how do we facilitate growth? I mean, you're looking at a line that from when you were young in, in yeah. Union Elementary has gone like this. In fact, you could even say you it have has, kids yeah. in Union Elementary now. How many sure. people my were great, union when my you? My grandmother were? went to union. Right, you and I bet I mean? it was a lot more crowded when sure. your grandmother went. Yeah, it was. It was a, it how was a larger we, school. How do we get more people into this town? We've, in theory, we've got the housing stock. You know, you've got elderly people who could be moving out and opening up houses for families. Sure. Yeah. Um, how do we entice those families? I think going back to incentives about. Uh, incentives for small business, incentives for businesses that can entice the uh, the wage opportunities. Uh, y you know, there needs to be opportunity here in the city in order for middle class families to come here or families to come here in general. Uh, well, that almost sounds circular. You need families to come here to get the downtown moving. You need the downtown moving to get families. That's right, coming. and and they and they totally are interdependent. You know, they depend on one another. So, it's uh, it's one of those things, um, and it's a challenge that we're working on. I think that the 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 council has done a good job thus far, uh, and a number of other people around the community are working very hard on this issue, but. We have more work to do, and we could make it more business friendly. I, I truly believe that without impacting the environment. How can we do that besides incentivizing? Is there anything else that, that you would do to help the business environment? Sure. I think that we could do a better job getting the, the city's name out, you know, uh, advertising and marketing the city for what it is, uh, a great, beautiful place to live, a wonderful place for businesses, uh, a place with a lot of, uh, a lot of money. There, there's a lot of money here. Um, and, and that's enticing to businesses. Not, we don't necessarily need to have uh, just tax incentives or uh, tax breaks for businesses. We could be bringing businesses here just on the premise that our crime rate is you know, next to nothing here. Uh, you know, I mean, we have an extremely low crime rate uh, on a national basis, and uh, that's one of those qualities, right? Uh, it's just we have lots of opportunities here, and we just need to do a better job talking about them, getting out there, and and generating conversation about that. I think. Boy, you're the only candidate who's grown up here <laughs> that that I've talked to in this cycle. Uh, there's a lot of them that have lived here for a long time. Sure. 
your children at Union. Yeah. How is it different for them walking on Main Street and State Street than it was for you? And just what do they face? What kind of Montpelier are they facing that, that's different than when you went yeah. to Union? I would say that the, the city overall, the, the historic look of the city has not changed much. The social uh, environment has changed greatly. I think that we've progressed a long way. Uh, and Progressed in what ways? Positive growth. Positive growth and positive, uh, good, um, community-connected, um, you know, just really... Are we an oasis in social discord you know, around the country where communities have, have kind of disintegrated in a sense, uh, or the uh, sense I, of community? And yeah, I think so. Are we so. an oasis I think, that's I think been we able are. to somehow? I think we are. I think, I think for the most part, Montpelier is, is, a, is still a community, whereas other places are not. You know, That's another quality of the city that makes us a wonderful place to live, right? We still have a sense of community. We still know each other. We can walk down the street and say hi to each other and know each other from a couple of days ago. Now, there might be a sense of a, you know, because we're so small, we only have 7,000 people or, you know, or roughly, that might be one of the reasons. But the other reason is that we care about each other. You know, we go to each other's birthday parties. We go to each other's events. We're very good at networking and, and, we, and we stay connected. So that's really good. I, I, uh, I think that that's one of the things that they see that we may have even gotten better at than when I was younger, you know? Uh, and that may have changed for the, for the better. Um, as far as the appearance of the city, it hasn't changed much, and I think that's one of my inspiration. That's one of the reasons why I want to run is is to see positive change in the city. In some of these areas, I saw knocked down when I was my son's age. They're still parking lots. They're still filled with four, 40 to a hundred cars, uh, and it's just a waste of space. It's a it's a concrete desert. Um, why not? throw up a building and, and, and offer business space there and affordable living space. Now, for someone who's lived here for this many years, I get the opportunity to ask a question. Sure. Which city council person, past or present, would you model your style after? You've seen so many city council people over the years. Is there one that sticks out in your mind as having a style that, that you felt really worked? I think, I think, personally, um, because of my age and the, when I started paying attention to city council, I think my favorite city council member is Justin. Justin Turcotte. Yes. Why? And Why Justin? Just because he's he's very active. He was on the um, he was on the uh, the the I'm forgetting the name of the. Um, the board that he served on uh, with corrections. Um, community justice? Yes, community justice. Right. There you go. Thank you very much. Um, he, he was on the community justice board um, and, and did a lot of work there um, and, and, uh, and has just been very vocal at times and, and a positive influence on the city. I think he's, he's done a really good job. As well he as a District at, 3 person. That's right. That's right. And he, uh, he worked, you know, I have a grandmother that lives at the senior center and above the senior center and uh, and he's had a very positive influence on her life too she talks about him all the time he's just a very open and outgoing uh, city council member and I, and I appreciate him for that and he's been a role model Craig thank you for coming in I so appreciate this now I want to talk to you and I want to say that you've watched this show I hope that you will watch the other candidates shows we've done all of the candidates at this point I hope you'll watch the one hour one on the school budget. That's good. And the one hour one on the city budget and the bonding issues is important. But what's most important is that you take this and get out and vote on town meeting day and get your friends out to vote, get your family out to vote. We've been talking about what a great community it is, but it's a community because you're out there doing things as a community, participating in planning, the commissions, the boards, but most important, getting out there and meeting the candidates, understanding what the issues are, and then actually fulfilling your obligation in getting out and vote. Thank you so very much for watching this.